All right. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are uh, across the globe. I'm so excited and have the honor and privilege of being part of this chat today with our with our small business owners and customers, but most importantly, our um, you know our our pioneers for really you know embracing not only their mission but you know being that proactive uh, thought leader for helping not only Asian. Um, the Pacific uh, Islander um, community, but also everyone that they're supporting, including women and minorities. So we're going to hear more about that today. Um, so let me first um, just introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, um, I am the executive sponsor of our APIN network. Um, I've been into it for almost 17 years now in many different roles. And then, um, really over the last few years, it's been such a privilege to lead this ERG. Uh, and we have, have a place to use my voice to promote all of the amazing work and um, that we've been doing to educate and to bring awareness to this ERG and to the many, many amazing members and allies that we have. And so today, um, with that said, I am, and also um, the, the work that I do at Intuit, the job that I play and role is I lead our customer success team for small business ecosystem. Um, I also lead our Intuit customer success um, uh, operations, a platform team um, supporting all of our businesses across the globe to make sure that we set up our experts every day for success. So thank you for having me here. Um, I will, I know you all are all eager to hear the story between uh, Wing On Wo and Yum Day. So let's dive right in. And, um, you know, I'd love to take a step back and um, have our small business owners introduce, um, uh, sorry, I'd love to have them introduce themselves um, talk about their inspiration. So I'll give a few minutes and we'll start with Leah to um, introduce yourself. Um, I was just telling her I love her title. It's an aspiration for me. I share some of her same desires and loves of snacks. Um, and then we'll go over to May. So Leah, let's start with you and uh, introduce yourself to the team here and to the to the leaders. And why everybody. <laughs> oh, it'd be great to show, show your website. Um, Perfect. Here we go. Oh, wonderful. Hello, everyone. I am Leah Valentine, uh, and I am the founder and, as Sarah mentioned, the chief snack officer of Yum Day. Uh, Yum Day is a curated snack box company and snack box subscription program that features and prioritizes women and BIPOC-led and mission-driven snack brands. Um, it's been so much fun to, to launch this entrepreneurial journey and really do something that I'm is so passionate about, which is snacks and storytelling and working with other small businesses and emerging brands to get the word out about the amazing things that they're doing. Um, and it's such a pleasure to get to share all of this with everyone here today. Thank you, Leah, for being here. Um, all right, you. May, over to you. Let's, uh, Patrick, let's show um, her amazing site and um, would love to, to love to hear from you and um, what your, um, what your company's about. And Oh, I think May, you might be on mute. Thank you for the. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here. As Sarah mentioned, I'm the fifth generation owner of Wing On Wo, which has been in my family since 1890. Um, I took over in 2016 without really having any plan to become a small business owner. So it's been a real learning journey to understand how to uh honor the legacy that has come before me my grandmother operated the shop before and really turned it into a full-fledged porcelain shop so now we're really trying to support asian american artists ceramicists and build on the tradition and breathe new life into um what we have on the site so excited to be here and continue the conversation with leah as well thank you well wow, i've got chills just thinking about if anyone has not had a chance please go to to May's website. There are some videos um, that are so amazing to see how her family over five generations has really built such an amazing culture in Manhattan, but also extended that um, to so many because they are um, virtual and online. So, um, so we'll have, but first let's get started, Leah. If we go back to um, just tell us a little bit about what you love about um, your mission and how your personal experience has shaped your, your values and mission um, and, and purpose-driven uh, company. Absolutely. Well, I mean, for me, um, you know, with, with 
using food as sort of my connection point. I think that's really been the driver for how I've been able to connect with you know community, coming to the United States as an immigrant, and then sharing um, a lot about myself. You know, I do this through through food and and feeding people, um, and eating. And so when I decided that I wanted to do something in this space and launch my business, you know, in that space, I thought the best way to do it um, was through highlighting people through their snacks and snack brands. And what I love about snacks, it's sort of like this easy way to try something new and different and to learn about someone. Uh, you know, you don't have to, to create a full recipe or, or cook a whole meal, but you could try a little taste of something that um, may mean, you know, uh, it's somebody's tradition, or it's a, you know, harkens back to a, a culinary uh, tradition for someone. So that's been the really exciting thing about having this focus on um, snacks and curating snack boxes for folks. I mean, for me too, I don't really come from an entrepreneurial family. So this was a very new and exciting thing for me to jump into. And I feel like with launching Yum Day um, and creating these curated snack boxes, it was a great way for me to start small um, and to really sort of uh, use my own passion for helping other small businesses and women and minorities and telling their stories as well. You know, I launched Yum Day in January of 2021, and the past couple of years have just flown by. Um, you know, when I Turned the, flipped the switch and turned on, you know, the the store. Um, it was so exciting because I I sold six whole boxes and I thought, whoa, I think I have something here. <laughs> and um, over the past two years, it's just been such an exciting journey to continue growing, to start the subscription program, to reach folks through corporate gifting. And to me, it's such a validation to know that this is what people are looking for. And so I'm so happy that I can provide this type of curation as a service to folks who want to discover something different, who want to shop by their values. I know that's how I am. If I can put my dollars towards helping an independent business owner, um, that's how I want to be, um, you know, how I want to shop. And so for me, every day is just, you know, a new, a new journey. There's always something new that I'm learning. I'm doing something different um, each moment. And, you know, what's super exciting is I'm just at the, the very beginning. And so, I can't wait to see maybe five generations from now, it may like where things can end up. And so it's fun to really think about the possibilities um, in the future. Wow, that's amazing. I, I, I love the purpose driven aspect of it, but more importantly, that, um, that aspect of using food, which is a common denominator for everybody um, mm -hmm. is, is, is so, it's just so genius. And number one, um, everybody needs a snack. <laughs> Yes, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, and, you know, to that end, you know, May, she just mentioned, you know, her aspiration to do what is actually very rare, you know, to see a business, uh, to see a business thrive across five generations. And um, I think when I read the story of how um, it start your uh, business family's business started, um, you know, your mom, I read and your grandma really revived the love of, of porcelains and moving away from, from perishables. And, and you actually brought that to life yourself when you took this on. I thought it was interesting. You said, I didn't think I would be a small business owner, but you have really been thriving and um, spearheading, um, um, you know, the growth of your, of your family's business, but also for others, inspiring them. Tell us a little bit about what, what does that vision of your success look like uh, when you think ahead a few years from now? Yeah, thanks for the question. I agree a lot with what Leah mentioned. I think being values aligned is really important to us and how we drive our business and how we operate. Um, my family talks about our storefront as welcoming folks into our family living room, and that feels really true to our ethos and how we connect with folks that walk into the shop and also who visit our Instagram and social media, we want it to be very personable and we want to be genuine and, and, and authentic in the ways that we're telling stories and preserving and growing tradition. I think that for us, success looks like continuing to do what we do and support Chinatown and be able to contribute to the resiliency of the neighborhood. That's equally as important as us thriving. Um, we know that we can't thrive without our community and um, that's why at the same time that I started uh, Wing on Wo, and I started to step into my role, I started something called the WOW Project, which is 
an art and activism nonprofit that holds cultural programming in the storefront space. And I'm sure we'll get more into that, but I think they're definitely interconnected. Um, running a business and running a nonprofit can be integrated and connected, and they can both work in um, in tandem to make sure that we're supporting the folks that we most care about and we're supporting the growth and livelihoods of our neighborhood and community. Yeah, I think that's, you know, I, I think uh, that would where the WOW project is something that is um, not only a, a, an amazing, um, uh, has an amazing purpose, but it is helping so many communities, even outside um, the business that you run. And so I, I would love to hear um, your inspiration, you know, I read around and I actually had never used the word um, gentrification <laughs> and uh, I Googled it for the definition to truly understand, you know, how that concept is um, is permeating across and, and um, would love to hear the challenges and also the 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 wins, you know, that you are um, you've encountered and experienced over this last year really. I'm trying to drive that mission for more than than just yourself and your family, but your community with WOW. Yeah. Um, to start with how we understand gentrification and displacement, I think we think about it in terms of different types of displacement, economic displacement, housing displacement, and cultural displacement. And um, what the WOW project is really looking at and trying to resist is the cultural displacement that happens while everything else is happening, right? Um, residents are being pushed out of their homes. Businesses are being pushed out of their commercial spaces because of rising rents. Um, and at, while those folks leave the neighborhood, there is this cultural fabric that starts to disintegrate. And for us, it's really important that we work with young people, specifically femme, queer, and trans Asian youth to build their skills, to cultivate their leadership skills so they can take ownership over the future of what our neighborhood looks like and go beyond even the borders of Chinatown. I think for us, what has been really challenging, I think for me personally, um, has been doing both, being the fifth generation owner of a business and also running a nonprofit full time. Um, and I started at the age of 25 and it's been seven years now. I'm 32 now. And I'm like looking back at my younger self and I'm like, how the hell did I do that? I don't get it. I'm so tired now. <laughs> so I think it's, yeah, it's thinking more long term, thinking about sustainability and thinking about it more in the perspective and timeline and context of how do we make sure that we're here to stay for the long term and make sure that there's longevity in the work that we do, just as Wing on Woe has been um, continuing to hold space for folks through five generations. I think that is the biggest impact that we can have. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, other questions related to that, but for sure, thinking more about long-term sustainability and how to self-preserve, uplift, and also empower other folks to take the lead. Well, I know everyone on this um, on this Zoom is super interested in some questions we'll have later for you to hear how we can actually help power your prosperity. As you know, that's into its mission, but every employee we have is, is out there to ensure that we you know, we hear from our small business owners on what we can be doing to, to help you with that mission. So with that, um, I'm going to transition to Leah because, you know, you hear about uh, May's, the nonprofit and also her physical location and, and growing her business and being there in Chinatown in Manhattan. I hear that um, as part of your, your and I didn't, um, you know, very early, like you've developed this great business model um, have been online, and I hear that you are expanding and uh, soon opening a physical location, your first physical location. So we'd love to hear about that journey. I'm sure you and May can compare notes on how to think about growth and expansion. What does that mean? A new set of challenges. But what's been the most rewarding about that as a milestone? What are some of the things on your mind as far as, you know, challenges and new things to think about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this um, May, I will be giving you a call later <laughs> for sure. 
Um, but yes, this is really exciting. This spring, I am opening up a physical location, my first brick and mortar space, and um, it's going to be in Wilmington, North Carolina. Well, I'm based in Austin right now, so there's been a lot of travel back and forth. Um, but one of the the big things um, is, you know, and I, I think one of the benefits too of being an entrepreneur that started online is now that I'm at this point where I can open uh, physical retail, I'm able to put it where I want to. And my family is out in Wilmington. I have a new little nephew. And, you know, part of this is wanting to be close to them. And also, I, I mean, so much of, of my story is really resonating with me because I want to be able to build something for my family too, uh, something that they can be a part of. And so this, the store just gets to be a next chapter for Yum Day. It means I can grow my business in this new way. I can grow something for my family as well. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. It's a lot of work, um, you know, the it's just a totally different space and a new way to to think about things um but like may said i've i've always had this desire to want to create a place that's like a living room for folks to come step in come snack with me uh there are products that are, are a little more difficult or challenging to sell online and to ship in boxes and so being in a space where i can really showcase these goods being there to, to talk to people and tell them the stories of these snacks is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, you know, and on top of just the snacks, I'm excited to expand the offerings to other great independent makers, um, local makers, folks who have become friends of mine now and showcase what they are creating in that specialty food and beverage space. So I'm, I'm so pumped about it. Um, it is coming soon. We'll be posting more on, on social so you can follow along on this journey. Now it's still, you know, small scale. I'm, I'm all into baby steps because I think that's really um, important, you know, and then I'm also looking forward to just seeing what is next after that launch. Um, there's just so much growth. And, and again, that's what thrills me the most. Well, we're so excited for you. And I think I can already see people in the in the chat um excited about it who live clo who are local to um, oh right open open up so we're excited that's to awesome to hear more about that so you know Thank i'm going to transition us a little bit to um you know thinking about the challenges you all have as a as a small business owner um running your day getting customers getting paid all of the things that you need to do to expand and continue to thrive and so it would be great to hear, um, and Maya, we could start with you, like what products do you use from QuickBooks or MailChimp and um, to run your business? And are there certain areas that, um, you know, uh, like managing cash flow, things like that, being compliant, what, those things that have been most impacted, um, either better or worse, we're open to any feedback uh, since, since um, using um, our products like QuickBooks. For either, for either of you, um, we could start May with you and and, and transition to Leah. Sure. Um, when I first took over the shop in 2016, um, the biggest challenge that I came up with was my grandmother hadn't been using any digital platforms to manage her bookkeeping. So everything was handwritten. Uh, so QuickBooks was really the first uh, platform and the first time that we took everything online and it helped us streamline our process and really set up a strong foundation for us in the years following um, to grow and look at our analytics and financials and really understand our cash flow um, and revenue streams. I think right now um, as a small business, what we're looking at um, as a challenge given the economy and um, the state of uh, US-China relations, especially since a lot of our porcelain and ceramics comes from and is sourced from the porcelain capital in China. Um, there are a lot of just fluctuations and up and downs and roller coasters with knowing that we can receive our product, production costs going up, um, and it's just been, I'm sure Leah can relate, like as a small business owner, I think the most important thing and quality you have is being flexible and nimble and thinking on your toes and feet. And um, for me, that has been, I think that's one of my strong suits, but I think 
having to communicate that to my family has been quite challenging and bringing them along for the ride on this roller coaster of whatever is in front of us. Um, for the WOW project and for Wing on Woe, we both use um, MailChimp to send out newsletters. Um, and that's been really helpful to not only spread the word about new products and new promotions, but also on, our, on the front of our nonprofit work, making sure that we're sharing um, programs that we're holding, driving um, our fundraising campaigns. I just shared um, one that we're uh, running right now for Lunar New Year. Um, and so those tools are really helpful and great to automate and just know like, okay, historically three years ago, we sent this newsletter and that that history is there to know where our touch points are with our audience. Um, so yeah, we're really, we're really grateful. And um, the QuickBooks and MailChimp tools have been really helpful in helping our growth and really building a strong foundation for us to engage with our community. Awesome. How about you, Leah? What, what um, tools or, or um, products from QuickBooks and MailChimp are you using? And how has that, um, those things changed or impacted, um, you know, kind of your work, uh, your workflow, things like that as, as you, as you bring them, brought them on? Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I've been a QuickBooks user for a long time, even pre young day days, uh, you know, when I would do freelancing or consulting work, I would use QuickBooks to, to manage, um, you know, my invoicing, my time for that. And so now using QuickBooks has really helped me understand, you know, my, my cash flow, my revenue, my expenses. And as a super new small business owner who is also um, just, this is a totally bootstrapped <laughs> operation, I, I have to watch every penny that comes in and out. Um, and thanks to, to products like this, I can get these at a glance uh, views to see, you know, where I'm at, how I'm doing, I can get a good forecast. And it's thanks to, you know, products like this, I can run the reports that tell me I'm in a good position to be able to move forward with chapter two, um, opening up this retail store. I'm, I'm in a good position to do this. Or like May said, you know, you have to be flexible and you have to be nimble as we hit different challenges. So I know where I need to shift or pull back. Um, and it's just so convenient to be able to you know, get online and see the state of my business as, as it is today, um, and then get a good view of what it could be, you know, tomorrow and in the future. Um, I was actually joking with somebody the other day that QuickBooks tiers are sort of like milestone badges for me. You know, I've gone from being the, the freelancer to the simple start. And it's like, you know, next thing I'm going to do the payroll <laughs> function. And it's kind of fun to see how you know, that I could be part of this system that can grow with me as I'm starting. It's not daunting up front, um, which for someone who's new to this, who's doing something, you know, pretty much as a solopreneur, um, I wanted a way to really learn. So there's a lot of value and education from even just being on the platform to managing my finances to now seeing how it can grow as I continue to grow. Um, and I don't have to really like, you know, there's not a, a crazy learning curve with how to, to navigate or use the system. So it's, um, it's kind of fun. Qu the QuickBooks tiers are now like my achievement badges <laughs> in oh, my uh, business. <laughs> I think you just made um, the year for many of the folks that are on listening to you to have described our product as fun and to uh, go up in, in our uh, products and our ecosystem as a badge. Um, it is our privilege and like delight to have hear from customers that we are actually making a difference with and then also to call our product fun is the epicenter <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> thing we want to hear so you know that is that is awesome and I you know you are all providing great input for us on the things we're doing to help you all um, be thrive and be successful you know we also really want to hear the things that keep you up at night and what can we we can be doing as we um, not just become the center of where you stay compliant and get all your books done and those things uh, run your payroll, but also how we help you prosper and grow. And so as you think about that, both between MailChimp and, and QuickBooks, um, you know, how has, you know, what keeps you up at night? What are some of those big new challenges and pain points? And by the way, 
huge congratulations to both of you. When you have a new set of challenges, it means you're growing. It means you're expanding. It means you're continuing to, to get to that next tier. And so, um, you know, I think there's a lot that um, comes with that that is just so um, admirable. And so, uh, but to that end, we'd love to hear what is that next set of challenges or biggest pain points that you're facing right now that, that we could think about and take back to our teams. And to, to potentially help create solutions for, of course. Either one of you could start. <laughs> sure, I can um, jump in here. I think for me, because I, I still feel really new in all of this, you know, as a, as a new entrepreneur, there's still so many things I'm learning that I didn't know I needed to know. Uh, <laughs> and so I think it's, um, what, what's great about a platform like QuickBooks is you do have these prompts that help you think through the way you are reporting, you know, especially when I'm looking at operations and finance uh, pieces. But also, you know, I think for me, it, it is a lot of what, what makes that is being able to be to be flexible and nimble because I get to work with a lot of other small business owners. You know, I'm I get to understand their challenges as well. And so if, if they're experiencing a supply chain issue, you know, that trickles down to me, you know, too. And so it's trying to understand, like, how can I support them? How can I be prepared to help, you know, close gaps where I can? Um, and how can I serve my customers while also being able to help amplify a, a, another small business? So I, I feel like I'm, I'm in an interesting position um, being this person in the middle that's providing an alternate, you know, retail experience. Um, but that means that I still also have to kind of go through what the other small businesses are going through um, as well. So it's, you know, I think that there's probably, there are a lot of things that keep me up <laughs> at night, but I think like you said, Sarah, it's, you know, these are, I have to reframe it and think it's a, this is a good challenge and a good learning experience to have. And it does mean, you know, I'm, I'm going through the growing pains right now. Um, so there can only be better things that, that come out of it ahead. Awesome. May, anything to add? Yeah, I really relate to what Leah has been sharing. I agree that we should chat after these. <laughs> um, in terms of what keeps me up at night, I think similarly to Leah, and maybe specific to WOW is that um, I think we're at a really interesting juncture right now um, with the business. And I feel like it's grown to a size or to a point and milestone where I didn't really anticipate that we would get here. We have a lot of inquiries for wholesale and custom orders, and that feels really exciting. But it's in terms of like team growth, it's still just me and my family and um, my best friend who I work on sourcing with. So I think it's really looking at um, our data and financials and also just our goals too, side by side to think through what is our grand vision? Is it that we want to wholesale in the future? Does that make sense given our production challenges? I think both are important, right? Like what quick QuickBooks and all the information that it helps amalgamate for us, but also the other side of vision boarding, ideating, having those two side by side would be really interesting. And I don't know if this is like a crazy idea for your <laughs> product team, but just I'm such a visual learner too. I know hard numbers are and are really important, but I would be um, just curious, like what would that look like if we could meld the two or if there would be um, a scenario where um, there could be like post-it note, sticky note visioning and the data from QuickBooks to really look forward to the future of a small business. Yeah, I, I love that. I'm a visual person too. Scenario planning with tools for you to be able to do that sounds like an amazing idea. So um Let's put that, that this is being recorded. So we'll have that on record. <laughs> um, and we love crazy ideas, like bold, bold, we call them bold. So um, um, never start with constraints is what I always say. Thank you, May. And, and you know, uh, one of the things that's very apparent that we hear from our small businesses is just the stress of everything that you have to do, especially for folks like you that are 
at that inflection point of massive scale growth, deciding how you're going to um, take that next step, which both of you have been courageous um, recently in how you're growing and expanding. Um, you know, how do you balance what needs to be done every day with making sure you're maintaining your well-being? As we all know, um, since the pandemic, um, keeping uh, a well-being for all of us, you know, whether you're a software engineer, or you're an entrepreneur, or you're a small business owner, um, is, is just paramount for us to be successful. And so I'd love to hear, and I'm sure everyone else would too, what's your, uh, you know, how do you manage um, and make sure that you have time for yourself and your well-being? Yeah, I'll jump in here. I've um, I've always had that problem of hyper productivity. <laughs> I'm sure there are many of you who are watching this call who are that way, where you have this feeling that you need to constantly be, be doing something. So I'm really making an effort to try to be intentional about taking a break, um, giving myself time. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that has helped is, um, you know, my pets, they let me know that they need me <laughs> to, to turn away from the computer, go out on a walk, you know, play with them. So, so I have that for sure. But I think if we, you know, our people that live by our calendars, you know, I try to, to set that time or try to set some blocks where I know I just need to focus on me and to take time to play. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot of like this idea of, of playing, just doing something. There's no goal to it, just having fun and enjoying it. Um, you know, which is tough because for so many years, everything that I've done is like, this is for work, this is for school, I have to achieve this or that. Um, and so letting myself have a chance, you know, every every week to, to take some time to just be playful, go out, take a walk, see some art, it just feels really good. And I think too, when I take those moments, I do notice that I am... Um, much better as a person who thinks creatively about making decisions because I've pulled myself out from, you know, being inside of my head all the time. Um, so I think if we can just find those little moments where we can, uh, you know, just jump on it. And, and it's great to have time to do nothing. <laughs> and so I want, I do want to have more of that, you know, having that space, uh, time to breathe. Awesome. Thanks. You're inspiring me to um, do nothing sometime this weekend. I'll try. <laughs> uh, May, how about you? Um, I'm really bad at making time for myself. And I'm trying this year to challenge that and change. Um, and I think the first thing that I want to work on is reevaluating my boundaries and thinking through um what in relationship with people and space and different corners and pockets of my life, like where, where do I feel most comfortable to protect that time for myself? Um, so I definitely feel like I'm in a reevaluation period. I think uh, another thing that really helps me that has been consistent throughout my uh, few years being a small business owner that, ha that has been really generative has been exercise. Um, I'm a big rock climber um, and that has just helped me put my phone away and focus and um, use my mind and body in a very connected way that helps me leave and know what my body needs and what it's telling me. And I think that is like the first part to understanding how to take care of yourself. Um, yeah, that would be well, my. Awesome. Uh, my nine-year-old daughter is getting into climbing, and so that's going to be her ten-year-old birthday party. And so, um, any advice you have on how to keep all like twenty-five, nine and ten-year-olds safe on <laughs> climbing and hiking would be great. So, anyway, that's awesome. Well, thank you all for the inspiration. I'm a little over time, and I want to make sure all of our members get a chance to um, ask their questions. But before I do. We like to do this kind of a quick and rapid fire. Tell us what's top of mind. Don't think, overthink it. Let's have fun. <laughs> Answer the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, I'll shoot you a few uh, quick questions and um, and then we can uh, uh, go through that. That'll be fun. So Leah, what is currently in quote unquote Leah's favorite box right now? Oh, um, we just celebrated National Popcorn Day last week. And so in this month's box, I had to have this really cool popcorn. 
which comes from a small family farm in Utah that's microwavable popcorn on a cob. So it's actually the full little cob and you put it in a, a little paper sack and you can microwave it. And the way that they harvest and, and grow the corn is so special. And I love that it, this is you know um, a multi-generational family farm that's out there growing corn and making the coolest popcorn I've ever had. So oh that's, God, that's that's one of my favorites. So cool, yeah. yeah. I love to look that up. That's amazing. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, May, what is your favorite product that you sell? And uh, is that an actual Zoom background or is that a like your actual office? I know, doesn't it look realistic? Yeah. It's Zoom background. <laughs> okay. This okay. is what the shop used to look like a year ago, but now we've kind of reconfigured. Uh, favorite product that we sell, I have to say, is we have these really, really beautiful cabbage plates that my grandmother and my grandparents had sourced from Hong Kong back in the 80s. And they used to be hand painted. And it was that a year ago, no, 2019, I had um, went to Hong Kong and I visited the oldest porcelain factory there. And I realized through just talking with the owners that um, my grandparents had sourced from them these plates. Uh, and because of uh, cultural craft dying and folks not really painting anymore, they have turned these plates into uh, more of a decaled microwavable plate. And I just got them in today. So I'm so excited to be able to support them one, but also continue the legacy of my grandparents' uh, products that they've sourced back in the day. So really excited about those. Awesome. All right, Leah, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, just do it. <laughs> I don't know if I can attribute that to Nike, but I, I can get stuck in the a planning, you know, phase for a while because I want things to be, you know, as perfect as possible. But then I realize sometimes you just have to do the thing. And that's where you get the most learning um, is once you, you just do it. So that's definitely been the most valuable piece of advice <laughs> I've I received. We, we all need that bumper sticker for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, May, what is a surprising fa fun fact about you? Um, in high school, I went to a arts high school here in New York. Um, my major was tuba. Wow, I didn't even know you could major in tuba. That is so cool. Do you play still? Oh my gosh, it must be bigger than you. You look very petite. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm sure we would all love to see that on your website, like a little, a little ditty. So, um, all right. So Leah, what is your favorite, uh, your least favorite chore? Um, like mopping. <laughs> <laughs> like vacuuming <laughs> and I know now like as a small business owner opening up a retail space I'm going to have to do a lot of that just all of the <laughs> the floor cleanup um yeah that's my least favorite <laughs> definitely empathize with you there um I have four kids under nine it gets really messy with Cheerios and goldfish everywhere <clears throat> so what is something uh May what is something uh you can't live without As of late, I feel like this is a 30 something thing. My heating pad that I use for my back at night. <laughs> it all comes back around full circle, doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, that's a good one. Um, so, okay. My favorite question of all, both for Leah, you and May, um, what do you love most about yourself? Ooh, um... I mean, there's there's so much maybe my curiosity I think that gotten me into trouble at times but uh, it's also the thing that has taken me really far and opened my eyes to to things I never would have known about or have done um, so yeah I think that's it curiosity great May um I think mine is my ability to turn on um, to challenge anything that people say I can't do. I have like a voice in my head that's like, yeah, you really think that? I'm going to show you. And I think that's what's been driving me for this many years. I might need to, for sustainability purposes, 
turn down the dial, but I think that's never do that. Never turn down the <laughs> dial. That is a, a an amazing quality and superpower to have, and it's truly inspirational. But what both of you are doing um, and what you've accomplished, I think many of us feel we're inspired to actually be more productive today, to actually not complain about anything we have on our plates compared to what you all have been able to accomplish and are doing. So I wanted to thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, this was the best Friday I've had, the most fun Friday I've had in a long time um, because of you and, and being able to do this today. So uh, thank you so much. So on that note, you're, you, on that note, um, I'm going to turn it over to Abby, who will do a live Q and A. So you can hear very similar sentiments, I'm sure, from most of our, from all of our um, allies and members that are on the call. So thanks so much. Um, have a great weekend, and I'll turn it over to Abby now to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so for those who don't know me, my name is Abby, um, and I am a sales marketing manager here at Intuit on the QuickBooks side of the business. And I'm one of our event organizers for our, as you can see here, Asia Pacific Network. Um, and so I'll be leading the Q&A. And again, just to echo what Sarah said, thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, as you can tell, community is super important to all of us here at Intuit. And so it's been really inspiring to get to know you guys and hear about how um, you guys have poured into your local communities as small business owners. Um, but also like, I'm glad we made this connection so that you guys can continue to pour into each other as well. Um, we do have a couple of, I want to make a quick announcement to our uh, community into it here. Um, just a reminder, we are giving away prizes after this event. So you will be entered into a drawing if you ask a question. So make sure you fill out the survey at the end. Um, or if you can just stay on for a couple of extra minutes as well. And then for those who haven't had the chance to feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A tab. Um, and we can uh, ask those of our panelists today. Um, one quick question that I know I definitely want to make sure we hit on, because as you can see again with my Zoom background, Lunar New Year, um, we are here in the midst of that celebration. Would love to hear from you guys, um, you know, a special tradition that you have with your family. Um, if there was anything unique that you did this year, um, would just kind of love to wish you guys also a new year as well. So. Yeah, I think um, for me, it's, well, probably for all of us, it's it's the food. <laughs> we always have to make sure we're, you know, creating and, and making our dumplings, our, our round foods, you know, I'm also Filipino, so it's a lot of pancit and our noodles. Um, and what I love about that, it's the whole family participating in, in cooking and eating together. Now, whether stuff makes it from the kitchen to the actual table, not totally sure just because we're all standing around eating as we're making it but you know that's definitely one of my favorite things about you know this celebration and and others too was how we can get together because of the food that we're sharing with one another and may what about you <laughs> yeah um i my grandfather has been the holder of a lot of traditions in my family and Growing up with him, um, my favorite thing has been the eve before Lunar New Year when we cook a big feast and we have a dinner together, but we also offer to our ancestors. My grandfather passed um, a few years ago and I am now the person that organizes this tradition for my family. And I've gone like 150% on the role of doing this and so it's just been really fun to make it my own too with the flowers the cherry blossoms the pussy willows and then like cooking a 10 course meal and showing my ancestors that I can <laughs> so that's definitely that. um my favorite tradition Yes, love it. Um, definitely a huge food holiday for all of us. So 